Hey everybody, it's Ruby here today, and I thought that I would do a uh, video on children's literature. This is a concept or idea or genre that um, I took a class in for um, some English credits uh, this past winter semester, and I've been waiting quite a while to share some of the things that I learned, um, but I wanted to wait until I'd finished the class so that we had read all the books and we had sort of wrapped up some of the main ideas in this, uh, and also to make sure that I passed the class. Not that I didn't think I'd pass the class, but because uh, I didn't want to relay in any information if um, I did particularly bad on any assignment or paper. Um, this video doesn't have a lot of direction, there wasn't like any sort of main idea I wanted to come across, um, or get across I guess, um, except that I think it's kind of cool to think of what children's literature is and how it's influenced a lot of our books now, um, and just um, some basic ideas that have sort of come up in the, the books. Um, so there's two sort of ideas that I want to point out before um, I get any further. Um, I'm going to go through all six of the books that we read and just sort of do a basic uh, summary and um, scope of them. Uh, but two things that um, sort of run through all the books is um, Child Sight and Hero's Journey. So Child Sight or Child Power um, is sort of the idea that innocence or um, not knowing that you can't do something um, uh, doesn't prevent you from doing it, I guess. So the innocence of childhood allows you to talk to animals or to, um, like, have certain kinds of powers. Um, I think the main example of this is Rapunzel in, like, the original Rapunzel story. Um, she lost her appeal, I think, um, from the witch, um, once she, uh, was pregnant with twins. So, um, I guess a different sort of innocence, but same sort of concept. Um, and the other thing that people always mention is Lyra from the Golden Compass. The main idea of the prophecy of her having to sort of, um, uh, pursue her own choices, um, and have free will within the con this context of, um, a destiny uh, is very much has to do with that idea of innocence as well. And I think that also comes from our idea of childhood um, and sort of the magical nature of children. Uh, the other thing is the hero's journey. Um, this is something that I've actually linked down below as well, um, although I think the video gets more into the characters that you come across instead of like the overall arc, um, but it was basically this idea that was discovered or illustrated by Joseph Campbell, who um, sort of pointed out all of these recurring themes that go on in the stories. Um, so basically like an archetypical story. Um, and so you have like a hero who um, is told that they're special in some sort of way, they have some sort of fate or prophecy, maybe they have like an extraordinary birth, maybe like uh, an interesting identity. Um, they're told to go on this journey, so they like journey towards something. There's a quest, so maybe they're trying to, to find something out, maybe discover thing, something about themselves. They're giving an enabled, enabling device, so like a ring, a book, a wand, that sort of thing. They have companions, they have like a mentor, um, and there's a couple of like plot things as well, like crossing a river or the descent into the underworld. Um, things that are probably more explicit in books from the past than they are now, where it's more about the self, um, but you can definitely see it in a lot of different things. Um, what I've noticed is that uh, when people complain that movies all seem very similar, uh, especially in Hollywood, uh, they're usually complaining about the hero's journey. So uh, comic book movies and such uh, will usually, usually use that same sort of arc. Um, but of course, the main uh, warning for using this sort of um, device uh, or structure, I guess, is that you can apply it to anything. You could apply it to um, your commute to school, even. Uh, so you really have to pick and choose what you want to use. Okay, so I've rambled enough, and now I'm going to get to some of the books and some of the main things that I discovered. A lot of these books you guys will have heard of already. Um, you will have uh, read them probably, um, and if not, I mean, go ahead, read them. I will hopefully not be spoiling anything for anybody because they've been around for a while. 
So the first one is um, Treasure Island by Robert Louis Stevenson. Um, this one is pretty well known. It deals with Jim, um, a, a boy in this, uh, who swept away on an adventure um, to try and find gold on the ship uh, until they discover that the crew members on the ship are actually pirates from like a previous um, thing, I guess, previous adventure. Um, it's written in such a way that Jim is looking back in time, so he's telling the narrators, or telling the readers, I guess, that this actually happened, um, and uh, that this was a wild, wild adventure, but he's okay now, he's a mature adult. And this was um, Stevenson's way of sort of getting around um, some of the controversy of these sorts of books at the time, where um, they had to be appealing to children, and that they had like adventure and blood and guts and gore. Um, but that they also uh, were um, moral uh, for adults, so that everything worked out and that there's a, a dividing line between good and evil and that um, the appeal of pirates, although appealing enough to read about, are not appealing enough to go off and actually gallivant. Um, and this is also a classic example of the hero's journey, of someone going on a, on a journey to find gold, a quest of maturity, um, and then also like the descent into the underworld is like um, the island um, and uh, there's like crossing of body of water and uh, there's a couple of archetypical characters in this. The second one is The Wind in the Willows. This was one I almost didn't include in this video, uh, which I thought was a little unfair because I did actually study it in the class. Um, because although there's some general hero's journey elements, uh, there's no like child power, um, the only real thing I can think of as to why it's a children's book instead of an adult's book is because there's talking animals in it. And at the time, apparently, that was considered pretty innovative um, to have talking animals. Uh, a lot of the reviews at the time didn't really know how to take it. They thought that it was like supposed to be like a biological textbook, in which case it was very anatomically incorrect. Um, and uh, it's quite funny. So it's basically just the idle adventures of mole, um, rat, uh, toad, and badger, um, and their sort of uh, adventures um, in the in nature. Um, it has to do with, I guess, like the beauty of nature. Um, so sort of more romantic idea, sort of like what you'd get with Lord Byron or uh, Shelley, and also sort of like uh, decadent or sort of paying a lot of attention to the to the sort of magical elements of nature and also like being civilized about it as you can tell from the fact that they're having tea on a boat in the middle of a river as a rat um so just living the simple life Number three is the hobbit um this book um i was extremely surprised to be reading in this class um i didn't realize that it was a children's book i read it when i was nine and I'm pretty sure I didn't understand most of what was going on, um, but looking back, I, I guess, sort of makes sense. Uh, if you ever want to explain the hero's journey to anybody ever, um, or if you want to pursue the hero's journey and see what it's all about, uh, use this this book as a guide. Um, Tolkien knew what he was doing when he was writing this, um, and it is pretty much the entire classical idea. Bilbo goes on a journey to find treasure. So again, some elements, some echoing of Treasure Island. Um, uh, and there's like a quest of... The quest is slightly different, maybe of like understanding of the greater world. Um, he has the ring, he has some a sword, he has some chainmail. Uh, he's told by Gandalf to go on this adventure, who advises him later on. He has the dwarves as companions. Uh, there's a descent um, into the mountain, into the woods. Uh, and they cross a river that um, confuses people and they're warned about, but of course they fall in anyways. And then we have Charlotte's Web. I almost cried reading this book again. Like, I had it read to me when I was seven and then I was thinking about how Charlotte was gonna die and I started tearing up again. Uh, it was a whole big mess. Um, I'd still recommend reading it. Um, we actually were told to contrast this book with uh, The Wind in the Willows because they're both about nature and about talking animals. But in this case, the talking animals is sort of through the eyes of Fern. So it is uh, child's 
power or child sight because she doesn't know she can't talk to animals. Um, and then later on she starts to move on, grow up, uh, starts to become interested in boys and stops talking to animals as much. And all of this is sort of under the context that life moves on, that there's a cycle to life, um, sort of this Western Buddhist idea of um, that nature is good um, and that uh, we have children and we die and it's okay because, you know, the next generation is coming up. Um, and uh, so, of course, there's going to be a lot of female characters in this as well, a lot of mother characters, um, and a lot of, like, depictions of death and a lot of, like, harder concepts of children, uh, but um, not necessarily um, pressing or uh, horrific. Um, and none of the animals want to actually escape, or Wilbur tries to escape and comes back, so it's sort of like, yeah, just be okay with where you are. Uh, and then we have a book that actually took a lot out of me when I was reading it. Um, first of all, because it was the first time I actually ever read it, I guess. Um, I was told several times that I should um, and didn't. Uh, and second of all, because there's a lot of themes in this, um, a lot of hero's journey elements, uh, child sight, um, but a lot of religion and stuff too, and not a lot of um, dividing lines between good and evil. And that's The Golden Compass by Philip Pullman. Um, as you can tell, I actually bought this at a like book haul um, thrift, thrift shopping thing last year, so that was pretty cool. Got this for pretty cheap. Um, a lot of you will probably be familiar with this already. Um, Lyra um, is given an alethiometer, told that she has to give it to her father, um, and Roger, uh, a friend of hers, is also kidnapped, and so she has to try and um, save him. So she's going on a journey, um, and along the way she runs into a lot of different characters. She has to deal with um, the concentration camp uh, that is trying to split her um, and other children from their uh, demons. So there's this sort of um, protective or um, innocent element to children that they're uh, trying to meddle with in this book. Uh, and it has to do with original sin. So as soon as your demons, who are like a part of your soul, um, solidify into a particular uh, symbol or, not symbol, animal, um, then you sort of uh, grow up, you've become an adult. And so um, Lyra in this book, although not explicitly told what her age is, is prepubescent because she hasn't sort of gone through any of those um, understanding elements yet. Um, and so you can definitely tell that uh, Pullman uh, pulled a lot from the hero's journey, a lot from child sight, um, and made an effort to talk about uh, religion. Um, my main favorite thing about this is that um, the magic in this is like science in our world because it's explicit that this is a parallel world. Um, so there's equivalent studies and universities, but that the scientific revolution hasn't happened the same way. So the way that they're discovering things is slightly different, but they're just still discovering it at the same rate, which I thought was super cool because I think that's sort of what magic is, right? Um, uh, sort of like science and physics, just not explained. Oh, wow. I'm trying to get through this, guys. I'm trying to get through this. All right. So last but not least is Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. This was the main reason that I actually took this class. Um, this is, again, classic idea of the hero's journey. Um, he is, he defeats a dark lord when he's really young, um, and he's told when he's older that he has a sort of destiny, uh, that they will expect great things out of him by Ollivander. Uh, he's given a wand and a pet, um, and he's uh, taken to a school where he's taught things by Dumbledore and McGonagall. Uh, he goes into the descent into the underworld, um, which is like finding the Philosopher's Stone. Cerberus is actually like known to be like the guardian of the underworld, so it's like an explicit reference to that. Um, he has companions, um, and uh, there's like a sort of struggle between good and evil. Um, but this is different, and this is probably explicitly different in that it's less about like 
a struggle between good and evil and more about like the struggle with the self um a lot more bullying and self-identity in this um sort of more about like the modern uh hero um quest for identity quest for parents um themes of friendship and loyalty um so a lot of classical ideas but again taken sort of given a modern twist and the other thing too is that i would argue that there is child sight in this in that harry pursues um quirrell and gets the philosopher's stone um, because he has pure intentions and because uh, he doesn't know he can't um or like he's not allowed but he doesn't know that he can't like defeat a dark lord right um so that was pretty cool i just gave you guys a whole bunch of information here um that i wanted to give you um so the reason i guess um that I wanted to talk about this, other than the fact that it was really cool to study these um, books, is because one of the main reasons that children's lit books become famous or popular or well-known is because adults like them as well. So there are adult themes and elements in these books. Um, uh, Treasure Island appealed to adults in its sense of morality and of historical context. Um, and there's like religious elements that are in the golden compass or domestic elements in the wind and the willows that adults can um, see as well it's just maybe slightly more deliberate or obvious than other books um and i think that that's important to consider because although i've sort of gone away from children's books and um, young adult books i think that they can still give, give us a lot of information when it comes to um, how we read and what we like and you know the hero's journey and that sort of thing and uh, there's also other things too like I would argue that although The Hobbit maybe is a children's book um, like the Sword of Shannara or like D David Edding's books like fantasy books that came out of that that were based off of that um, are less of children's books so uh, children's books that become popular sort of might also influence like adult books as well so hopefully um, this this uh, video gave you some information into the last semester of my life uh, and the videos that maybe I was slow on the uptake for um, and that uh, yeah let let me know if there's anything else you think of for children's lit if there's any reasons why we separate the two of them or if there's a reason why you like children's books more than adult books um, also let me know if there's any other sort of videos you guys want to see um, I've been doing a lot of book reviews lately, some discussions, not a lot of book hauls and stuff, and I just wanted to know what you guys were looking for. Do you want, do you still like book reviews? Has it gotten kind of boring? Are there like, do you want me to do book lists or um, what I'm reading at the time? Do you want to do more of an updated like monthly thing? Uh, it's the summer, I have more time to do this stuff. Um, I'm also hopefully moving soon, so I'll be able to do some sort of bookshelf tour maybe once I've sorted out my books. Um, so yeah, just let me know. And of course, like, comment, um, like, subscribe, check out my social media, do your thing, and I will talk to you guys later.